four ordinary guys with extraordinary ideas for Disney parks. This is Main Street Musings. The Experimental Podcast of Tomorrow. That's right. Welcome back to Main Street Musings, the experimental podcast of tomorrow. My name is Jake. Joining me today, he's only half a man without his car, Tanner. Hey there. (laughs) Don't worry, Herbie. He's your friend, Brock. Hey, Herb. And he's been on that hate Ashbury beat too long. It's Eric. That's right. In case you have not figured it out, those were quotes from the movie The Love Bug. And today we are focusing on our Love Bug uh, pitches or pitch from our Main Street Madness brackets because apparently that's the one that won. I think much to the shock of all of us. Um, I am pleasantly shocked. I think Eric was horrified. I didn't think Herbie was going to win. Um, and so you look at our bracket. And it was, like, Herbie went through some stuff, right? Like, <laughs> he starts off up against the NASCAR roller coaster, which sounds sick as fuck. And then he goes up against the Escape Sunnyside Dark Ride. Toy Story is, like, a massive property that everybody loves. <laughs> and it sneaks through, it wins there. It won, like, almost all of them on a tie and then an extra vote, too. Like, it never, like, really <laughs> dominated everything. So it was always close. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> and then it would go back and forth a few times because I would watch the vote. And it was, like, sometimes it was winning, sometimes it was losing, and then at the last minute it would just, like, eke through. Yeah. I think part of it has to do with the fact that we called it the El Dorado race, which just sounds cool. I, I'm ninety percent sure. For the first couple of rounds, people might have thought they were voting for something to do with the Road to El Dorado movie. That's yeah. not a Disney, film. which is a DreamWorks movie, yeah. not a Disney movie. Which is sad because I want to talk about it in this podcast all the time. It's yeah. one of my favorite movies. I want a Mayan court ball experience so bad. <laughs> so, first of all, thank you all for voting. the The voter turnout was. In very impressive. Um, so thanks yeah, for our the highest yet. Now let's try to keep it that high. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Watch yeah, it I will pull your weight around here, not listeners. To antagonize everybody. <laughs> and then Jake is like, please, we need to be influencers. Um, <laughs> so now are you saying if when it's low again, it's going to be my fault? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're scaring them away. Exactly what I'm <laughs> so let's, uh, real quick here, what's, what's our biggest upset from the bracket? I know... I think my, like, things that didn't win that we expected to, um, I know for me, I had a lot riding on Bing Bong's Void Log Flume, but that's just because I am uh, a nihilist, and I assumed everybody else was too. I had a lot riding on Bing Bong's Void too, and I know we did have a uh, social media campaign that failed <laughs> to get it through the first round. Yeah, me and Tanner really like <laughs> stepped out of our role as just content producers, and we're like, please, everybody, vote for Bing make Bong's us talk Void. about Bing Bong's Void for an hour. <laughs> my my uh, my per- personal two big upsets were: I really thought Yzma's Apothecary Restaurant was going to go yeah. the distance, like. That was I'm I'm very, still pretty surprised that it didn't, uh, and then the other one, which I think was a, a matter of labeling, um, the Escape Sunnyside Dark Ride, I thought might have gone a little farther, but I think it's because people forgot that in the original pitch, uh, it ends with the toys dying, so I think people <laughs> oh, forgot that. <laughs> so you had a problem with uh, Jake and I's labeling. I guess we'll leave all of the responsibilities to run these things yeah. up to you in the future, Brock. <laughs> You see yeah. if you can I love fit it. Your own that how whenever Brock says something, <laughs> they like to yell at him. Whenever anyone else says something, Brock, you just said, <laughs> and I quote, "I think it was a problem with the labeling." <laughs> Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I personally, I don't know that I was surprised that they didn't win, but I was hoping to see Jumba's uh, drop ride go farther because I think it would be cool to have a uh, Lilo and Stitch ride. Um, and also, I had, I still have some really good ideas for Elsa's Enchanted Carousel. I honestly, that one made it through the first two rounds, and I was like, oh, I can get behind this. I've got some cool ideas for it. And then it just got killed. <laughs> 
So I wanted yeah. it to go the distance because I know how much Eric hated my carousel idea and poo pooed it in the episode we pitched it. <laughs> so I would have loved nothing more than to crown it the <laughs> queen of all lightning round pitches. <laughs> that would have been my literal nightmare. Just to have Tanner <laughs> gloat over me for a full like 30 to 45, maybe 60 minutes. Who knows? <laughs> this episode would have been four hours long. <laughs> and then talking about how you guys at the beginning stepped out of your uh, roles and were kind of campaigning for one. I was trying to avoid that. Um, but then when it got down to Night on Bald Mountain versus Herbie, Eric was like j- just so upset and <laughs> hated Herbie. And the fact that he hated Herbie so much just made me want to step in and be like, everybody, we need to vote for Herbie. So any of you yeah. who saw me commenting on anything about why we wanted Herbie... <laughs> Um, that was despite Eric. Yeah. <laughs> I also, will say, I, love I think Herbie. the Night on Bald Mountain ride would have been really cool to talk about, but the yeah, fact that we spited I, I Eric agree. is good too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, and it's it probably win. works. It only won by like one vote, which was probably pushed by Jake's spite. Like that's, <laughs> and that's why, honestly, like props to you, buddy. Like <laughs> the only, like the, like I have no issues Ultimately, that Herbie won. I want the vote to be, you know, re- like I want it to be legit, and I'm glad that really yeah. happy with the engagement. The only problem is I was so not expecting it to win <laughs> that when we found out yesterday, the day before we record, that it won, I literally had no time to watch it. So I have, like I just feel very underprepared. <laughs> So, Eric, Herbie is a car. <laughs> it talks or something? Yeah. It's good. He it does, does not talk. talk. Well, I don't fucking know. <laughs> he emotes ver- with his paws. He kind of screams in that one scene where he's kidnapped. Yeah. Yeah, he does kind of like wail sadly. <laughs> Oh, well, that's so. Right, I think that's, that's a good right. transition to maybe we should uh, talk about the movie a little bit. Now, obviously, I've talked about this before. Brock and I watched this movie a lot growing up. I love this movie. It is still one of my favorite movies. You, sp- Brock, you said what that is your like thoughts I did. That? No, I, I, no, I love no. this movie. I just no, I, would, I didn't want to speak for you. Oh, I was okay. speaking for myself, and I was going to go. Brock, why don't you weigh in? You jack. But fuck you. So you know what? I don't want to hear what you have to say, <laughs> Tanner. You went and decided to watch this movie for the first time because we had this pitch coming okay, up. Real what quick, are your feelings? Uh, I just want to say uh, all, to all the listeners out there. You Tanner. know how uh, you have that one group a friend in the friend group who you all like decided, hey, it's really fun to just like shit on this guy, and we'll like we'll make fun of him all the time. I, uh, I'm here to tell you, they don't like that. <laughs> They aren't having a good time. <laughs> well, good thing we picked you. <laughs> okay, fine. Brock, go ahead. Tell me about Herbie. I was going to say, I haven't watched it in a long time since I was young. I watched it a hundred times then. Uh, I rewatched some of it, uh, near mostly at the end of it for this. And there, there are some things I think don't hold up. There's some problematic of the era stuff, but for the most part, I think it's great. The cast is phenomenal, uh, and I think it's a lot of fun. So yeah, I would definitely recommend checking it out. While also just keep in mind, keeping in mind when it was made and what people were like at the time. Tanner, what was your experience like having seen it for the first time as an adult? What What do you think? All right, are you guys ready for my hot take? Yeah. He hated it, I'm sure. He's got that look on his face. It was fine. <laughs> I, I right. didn't love it, but go. I didn't hate it. <laughs> there was the stuff in it that takes. made me go, oh, that was cool. I'm more excited to talk about it as a ride than I think I fell in love with the movie itself, I will say. It's something that I would want that to ride sense. a lot uh, now that I've seen it. Having known Tanner yeah. for a while uh, and having known my brother and I for a while, uh, Jake and I at growing up, we watched a lot of movies from like the fifties and sixties. So we're kind of used yeah. to that pacing. Um, I know Tanner isn't necessarily that way and a lot of people aren't. So if you aren't used to the pacing of those kind of movies, it, it's, it's a little slow. It's a little, it's a little boring at times. Um, but if you, if you, if that doesn't bother you at all, I think you'll have a pretty good time, but it's not a character flaw if that does bother you. <laughs> <laughs> no, so it was 
it was honestly, I was expecting to really hate it when I went into it, and there were a lot of parts I did enjoy. So I'm glad, overall, I'm glad I watched it, but like I said, I'm more excited to talk about it as a ride because riding in Herbie seems very fun. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and you guys thought I was going to be horrible about the movie. <laughs> I'm not a monster. I, I thought you were determined to hate it just to piss me off. <laughs> no. No, I think a lot of it is uh, just, as Brock said, I only really like a couple of older movies, and I haven't seen a ton, so the pacing is just something for me. Gotcha. Where it's, and also, uh, I was never super into cars at really any point in my life. Uh, I know, shocking to you three and probably most of the <laughs> listeners who know us, <laughs> except for the Fast and Furious movies. I've never really been into cars <laughs> too much. So there was a lot going against it to begin with, and I had a lot of, like, overall I enjoyed it, and I'm excited to talk about it now that I've seen the movie. Because I was also picturing this being a regular race at the end and not, like, what it mm. was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah well to be honest i was never really into cars either growing Same. up and i I, th- I think it's a good movie about cars for people who aren't necessarily into cars like i think you can still enjoy it without being into cars because herbie is you know he's he's almost his personality is almost more like a child you know like a human child ah. what a little, I'm not. I mean, there is anything. that scene where he's like definitely trying anything. to get dean jones and uh michelle lee to to bone <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he's trying to get them to bone. I think it's more innocent than that. Uh, Jake, Jake, I don't know. He was determined to make them park. But he that takes was them actually... to that hill where the, the where the waitress was like, uh, the, "The cops don't bother you there if you want some alone time." <laughs> and this brings up a good point of why I think Eric should be more excited about this uh, ride. He has been a strong proponent that we need more teen makeout rides in the Disney parks. I have, and yes. I don't know if there's a better vehicle for teen <laughs> makeout rides than Herbie, the best wingman in the world. <laughs> I mean, that's going in. That's going to a stop on Makeout Hill. That's part of our dark ride, bruh. Making out in the dark? <laughs> Jake looks so hurry? dissatisfied. Also, Jake, my sweet I'm baby just boy. Real, no, real quick he though, is while getting we're them to fuck, I don't even. I haven't even seen it, and I just know. So I know. real quick, while we're still on the topic of the movie, before you're supposed we move to be to... the non-prudish of the Gabbard boys. How did what? this happen? When did I'm, this, I'm not when prudish. Did drunk is a prude. Come into this scenario <laughs> I am because not the prude by car. any means. But it's just I, so. Here's the I I I just I think that Herbie is more childlike than you guys are making him out to be. That's all. That was my I'm interpretation of like the character. A year old boy. Jake's not a prude. I've, he just I've will not stand that. for the besmirching of Herbie's character. <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> Who gets wasted and tries to kill himself in this movie. That is true. <laughs> like know, a child Like would. a child. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't get wasted of his own accord. The alcohol is poured into him unwillingly. <laughs> yes. Brack, just, what do you want? I was <laughs> just going to say... I thought this there we had a good transition point when I started speaking, but y'all were determined to make sure that wasn't the case. I was going to say, before we start talking about the ride, while we're still talking about the movie, I just want to take a moment to acknowledge the cast, which is phenomenal. Uh, yes. Dean Jones is a great leading man. You got Buddy Hackett, who's one of the funniest people to ever live, and David Tomlinson, who has never been anything less than spectacular in anything he's been in. Uh, Michelle Lee, I don't know from a lot of stuff, but she's a lot of fun as well. That's all I wanted to say. And so, want to talk Good about segue, the ride. Brock and segue. So, <laughs> that's a little bit about Herbie and his <laughs> personality was and his libido. Going for a segue. And <laughs> so, <laughs> just kinda... oh no, <laughs> Jake, how that's... quickly did your dream turn into a nightmare? <laughs> Spoiler yeah, alert, I just, never hand Eric anything that you love or care about. He will taint it and ruin it. Yeah, don't blame this on Eric, you son of a bitch. You're the one who started this bull****.
Eric never seen the movie. Eric never the movie. He just jumped on the Tanner train. Fuck <laughs> you. I'm not letting you Brock get away with this. First. Tanner always does this. Tanner stirs up shit and then tries to get everybody going and sits back and laughs. And I'm not fucking standing for this time, buddy boy. You sit there with that little face. You know See? what? Herbie sucked. The love bug sucks. I'll take everything positive See, there I it said is. Back. There it is. Speaking of uh, the cast and a good way we could connect it to the Disney parks, Wally Bo of the Golden Horseshoe Review has a cameo as a flabbergasted driver. Wow. Yeah, he in was... In the Golden Horseshoe Review, as we all know, in Frontierland... In Disneyland. Where do we see our love bug ride going? I think Hollywood Studios would be a good place for it. It's it got... Feels like th- a natural fit. Yeah, and I mean, it takes place in California. The El Dorado race is yeah. in, in Southern California, so I think that'd be perfect. Yeah, and the rest of the movie takes place in San Francisco. Yeah, and you could probably mirror it in DCA, too, if you wanted to. If you, yeah, um, yeah, there's yeah. not enough cars there. <laughs> right, it, it could go in Cars Land. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Just give him a face. <laughs> <laughs> Before we jump fully into the ride, a real quick rundown of the uh, of the specifics of the pitch that won the bracket. It is a love bug row race to El Dorado dark ride. <laughs> The race so, is Jake, called the Eldorado. So, Jake, how about you Eldorado. tell us about the specifics of this? Because <laughs> I'm not sure Eric remembers. <laughs> it's a, it's so, okay. It's something to Eldorado Dark Ride. the The name of the race is the Eldorado. That's oh, okay. what the race is called. <laughs> yeah, that's it's just just what it's called in the movie. It's called it's the race for the gold around. because there's like a big cash prize if you win. Okay. Uh, do you guys want me to repeat my actual thirty second pitch? Because word for word, because I don't remember it. No, no, just the general no, idea. Just, so it's. So the, the, race, the gist dark was, ride. it's not a race ride. The, yeah, so it's a it's a dark ride. You are riding inside Herbie. Herbie is is doing the race. You're encountering a lot of the same things that happen from the movie. Like I know I specifically mentioned the mine scene and the mine elevator. That's fun. Um, and then the big finale. Spoiler alert for those who need to watch the movie is Herbie actually splits in half his front half and his back half and his back half ends up winning the race and the front half comes in third. And then it's one of my favorite lines is when the announcer goes, the little car wins first and third place. Um, (laughs) so anyway, that's kind of the gist. Herbie's ass get the gold then. (laughs) They don't say, I mean, (laughs) potentially. Yeah. That's the assumption. (laughs) Just that sweet. He's, he's got a face of bronze and an ass yeah. of gold. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So yeah, it's the Eldorado, and, and I just wanted to make sure that we specified this is a dark ride. We're not switching mediums or anything. No. Um, I would say definitely a dark ride overall. I had a one idea that we'll discuss when we get into the ride development of maybe it might be cool if some of the ride went outside for short periods of time, but overall I would want, I think this should be a dark ride. <gasps> okay. That does, that does sound cool. <laughs> Eric, you looked like you were upset by that notion. <laughs> I just never expected you to be such a rule breaker. <laughs> such a wild card. Oh my God. <laughs> so, while I was watching the movie last night, I literally made a note of every single point of the race that I thought could be cool to include in this ride. And there are a lot of cool moments in that race, probably too many to incorporate all into a ride, if I'm being totally honest. Yeah. But we can still discuss. So I don't know. How should we start this bad boy off? I want to throw something out there and uh, see what you guys think. I feel like this needs to be a trackless uh, dark ride vehicle. Yeah, I, uh, yeah, absolutely. Just like the way Herbie moves, I think it's perfect for a trackless ride where you don't see exactly what's happening, where you're going on the course. Yeah, that sounds yeah. sweet. That's totally fine. Yeah, and I agree. I, I know it, it seems obvious, but we're all in agreement. Herbie himself is the ride vehicle, correct? Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. 
Probably a convertible. No, no you're going to ride in a normal car and watch people in Herbie having fun <laughs> while you're driving next to them in a normal car. <laughs> um, you can be in Thorndike's car and get yelled at the whole time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you get to be Havishaw. <laughs> <laughs> Thorndike, for Eric and the uh, listeners at home, is the villain of the film. Yeah. Played by the great played by Tanner, David huh? Tomlinson. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, I think probably like a convertible version of Herbie. Uh, so that way we aren't losing yeah, that line. Yeah. yeah, you can, I mean, as long as you get his number on there and the coloring scheme, yeah. right? Like, you can go convertible, that's fine. Uh, and So I think we're also in agreement that the split of the car needs to happen so that this vehicle needs to like be like two pieces. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. Like, maybe like two people in front, two people in back, and then at the point of the ride this trackless ride they could split apart and maybe like ride next to each other or whatever right right which is what happens in the movie and it's yeah. it's pretty funny and the last thing on my wish list was incorporating some of the like indiana jones dinosaur technology into it i thought would be cool mm-hmm. to kind of how like herbie cartoonishly like goes up on his back wheels or on his side wheels at different right. times yeah, I, I wrote that down. I think I love when he takes off, mm-hmm. um, especially in the second half of the race where he's really pissed off at Thorndike and he pops this massive wheelie yeah. and he just goes flying down the uh, the track. Yeah, um, that I think was it would my be first cool note to work too. stuff like that in. <laughs> so before yeah. we get too far into the ride, Jake, do you want to explain the general idea of the race in the film? Because it's not a standard race. Yeah, so the way the El Dorado race works is it's it's huge, um, and it's like in it's in almost like the desert, uh, kind of like mountains in California, and um, the race is so long that it's actually spread over two days, and you race in this big circle through old like mining towns and stuff. And it's it's a road race. It's like dirt roads, and and there's not really a lot of rules other than you know you have to get all the way out to the checkpoint at the far end, and then you circle back around to where you started the race from. And the whole first day is going out to the far checkpoint, and then the race stops, and they record when everybody came in, and then they all spend the night in that little town, and then the next morning they all leave again in the same order they came in, and they're spaced out by how much time uh, elapsed between people arriving, and then they get to drive back. Um, so that's the Eldorado, but it, it go because it's just it's not on an actual racetrack. It, they go through an old ghost town at one point. There's a part where Thorndike um, is cheating and he changes a sign, and all of the cars end up in an old mine shaft, which I think is pretty funny. Um, I would like to see that in the ride. So you get a lot of cool moments where it's instead of just being on a track going in a circle, you're like in the woods or going down a hill or all kinds of stuff. There's one point where um, all the cars are switchbacking down the side of this hill and herbie is like no screw that and just goes straight down the middle of this massive hill while all the cars are like switchbacking around him um and those are all moments i think that'd be really cool in the race brack did i forget anything no i think that's the major thrust of it um so yeah but uh part of the idea is that there is constantly uh Thorndike, the the villain, is constantly trying to sabotage the other racers and especially uh, Herbie. So right. in the the Douglas car, so that is what is would probably be happening throughout the ride. That would be the perfect type of conflict, and especially if we're doing a um, a trackless type system, uh, we could show a lot of those sabotages from the film that you don't necessarily get every ride. Right. Um, so that way, you know, you might hit the oil yeah. slick or you might hit the log in the road or you might, you know. Yeah. I love the idea of this race feeling different every time you get on it. And especially yeah. especially if you had the cars split into different ways, you wouldn't be in Herbie watching a bunch of other Herbies the whole time. Mm-hmm. Right. So um, my notes are in chronological order because I was writing them as I was watching the movie. So I don't know if we want to kind of just talk chronological order as we go, kind of um, like we usually do. Yeah, Let's, I think that I have a couple more notes on the ride vehicle. Um, yeah, go so for it. <laughs> yeah, it definitely needs to split in half like we were talking about. But I think because if we're going to do a trackless ride vehicle, what you do lose there is a lot of the kind of like 
rough terrain and the jumping that Herbie does. So I think if we could somehow incorporate a hydraulic system into the ride vehicle where the car would still feel Almost like it was like bouncing. Almost like the Indiana Jones or dinosaur uh, technology. Which yes, is exactly what but, Tanner was talking about. Yeah, but it's not a, those are not, okay, that's what you meant by that. Okay. Yeah. No, yeah, okay. Because then you can have it. <laughs> I love you, Brock. The, the base I'm sorry. of the car <laughs> no, in those fine. vehicles. For any of our audience that's not familiar, this is a good point to explain it. The base of those vehicles always remains flat and in contact with the ground. But the top half where the audience is sitting can move separate of that. So you can make it so the top half feels and looks like it's popping a wheelie while the base of the car is still sitting safely on the ground. And I think that's what Tanner was meaning when he brought yes. up the Indiana Jones yeah. slash dinosaur ride vehicles. I was a little confused, but yes, that that is exactly. No, nah, I think that, that should exactly be bulky and brown happen. instead of her. <laughs> 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 so also, unfortunately, if we want to keep that iconic Herbie design, it's going to have to be a uh, four person ride vehicle. Um, right. Yeah, two in the front, uh, two in the back when it splits, before. which I think is fine, but. This wouldn't eat a ton of people. Well, we That's don't want to eat people. We want to <laughs> be their friend. <laughs> so should we talk quick about the queue and then get into the race? I think let's get to yeah, the queue. Yeah, so I actually... Now. <laughs> <laughs> I had actually <laughs> made a note that I thought, um, and shoot me down if I'm wrong, it might be cool if the queue line went through Jim and Tennessee's house. They live in that old fire station, and then you could see like some of Tennessee's sculptures and stuff, and you can see Jim's little mm. garage. Mm -hmm. I don't know. What do you guys think? Uh, Tennessee is the Buddy Hackett character, and Jim Douglas is the Dean Jones character, who, by the way, is very handsome. Weird flex, but okay. <laughs> he is. Uh, no, he is. Jake, I think that's a great idea, though. I, I was going to say the same thing about wanting to see some of their garage and stuff specifically, so I think that's yeah. a good cue line. And I would really like to see Tennessee sculpture with mm -hmm. the Etzel. There's mm -hmm. this great part in the movie where Jim comes home and needs to borrow the car and Tennessee buddy Hackett says, well, you might have some trouble getting it started. And Jim turns and looks and Tennessee has taken the car apart and built a sculpture out of it because the moment <laughs> struck him and he just <laughs> needed to build a sculpture. So. <laughs> okay. The more I hear about this movie, the more I'm like, Hey, no, there's some stuff. really <laughs> legitimately funny stuff in it. Yeah. <laughs> And if you like it when it looks like a car is peeing on a person, you'll like this movie. Oh, <laughs> that happens you, uh, twice. You understand me. <laughs> or if you like it when the car pukes up whipped cream. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because it's drunk. Out of his tailpipe. <laughs> I guess I it's not puking. Called puking at that point. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I had to add that. <laughs> Herbie has IBS. Not where my brain oh. went, but yes. Also that, that's probably, the sixth yeah. sequel, right, Brock? What's that? Herbie Herbie gets IBS. Is that the sixth movie? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you guys think that sounds good for the Q line then? Yeah, going for through? sure. Yeah, I think that sounds sweet. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And Buddy Hackett can serve us coffee. The Irish my... coffee? Yeah, but with the blowtorch <laughs> specifically. Yeah, he makes his Irish coffee with a blowtorch, which is fun. Um, so another note I had is I would really like to use the classic Herbie theme song in the ride. Um, but that's not, you know, a big thing. Yeah. It's great music. Yeah. So we have the actual race now and I just made notes of everything that was interesting. So one of the first things that happens to Herbie after the race starts is Thorndike, um, gets in front of him and then makes the oil slick. He pushes a button in his car and a bunch of oil pours out of the back of his car and Herbie mm -hmm. goes sliding and spinning and skidding all over the place behind the bad guy's car. I think that would be a fun moment if that's where the uh, car stuff starts splitting off into different directions. So yeah, because the they all oil. just kind of spin off in different ways. Yeah, you spin off. How quickly off, do yeah. we want that to happen? Do we want the whole ride being two different, like the, the vehicle split, or do we want that to be more of a moment towards the end? 
doesn't matter to me. I'm just kind of. Well, I, no, no, I, no. Think so I, I think you're. I think Brock. Oh yeah, I shouldn't have used the word. We're split. using the word split to yeah. mean many things. What Brock meant was this is the point where all of the ride vehicles will go Diverge. in different directions, so that way you're not uh, seeing a bunch of Herbies. I apologize. Sure. Yeah, yeah, I shouldn't have said split. <laughs> yeah. So the split, I think, where Herbie physically splits in half, we'll still save that for the end. Yes. Yeah. Because that's I was, huge. I was yeah. like, that's because that's early. kind of the big finale. <laughs> yeah. No. Herbie finishes the whole race in two halves. <laughs> Yeah, we can't shoot our whipped cream out of our tailpipe that quickly. You know what I'm saying? It, it would be hilarious, like if you got on a ride with your family, and the and Herbie splits in half, and then like you don't finish the ride with your family. You just like don't see them anymore. And, like your half goes one way, and their half goes another way. And you're a family of um, three, so you're just like the one. Who had to ride in the back yeah, by like, yourself? It's your kid. Like the mom and dad go one way, and the kid goes the other <laughs> way. <laughs> With all so, the backs. Um, oh, that actually reminds me. I don't know what the safety implications are, but I thought it would be cool if we could see Herbie's steering wheel and it's steering independently of like what you're trying to get like it doesn't matter what you try to do to it it's like actually following the ride uh, if we're going along with like the indiana jones theme like that kind of feel to it you have like it's kind of like a, at least two feet in front of you and facing very vertically off of the vehicle itself so i think you could probably be fine Okay, because that's one thing in the movie that's cool is you can always like when Herbie's ignoring Jim, like Jim clearly wants to go one way and Herbie's kind of like, no, we're going this way. And the wheel just like turns anyway, Yeah, you know, and maybe or even if we had the pedals on the floor, because you can always see Herbie's pedals like going even if you're not touching them. So that would be something only the person in the front could see. But that would still be a cool little detail to have, you know. Agreed. So after the oil slick, the next big thing that happens is the bear incident which is where Thorndike um, drives into a mud puddle and gets stuck. And while he's trying to get loose, a bear climbs into the passenger seat of his car. But he has mud on his visor, and he doesn't realize it's a bear. He thinks it's his friend Havishaw. And he drives away talking to it and, like, handing it a map and stuff. And it, it's quite a funny scene. Now, we couldn't get a bear into the ride vehicle, but I thought it might be fun to see an animatronic of that happening. Since it happens to Thorndike, yeah. it might be fun to drive past it happening. Yeah. I don't know. What are your thoughts? Actually, that brings up something I wanted to ask about, which was the Thorndike issue. Uh, because this is a race uh, that would usually have other cars, you know, on the same track, unrelated to Herbie. Yeah. How do you guys want to do Thorndike? Because I don't think it necessarily works if he's always just kind of parked on the side. Like, ah! <laughs> like, I feel like... If we could somehow have him actually moving in front of us or behind us. Well, I, I think we could have him as a, as a prop that, you know, like maybe as we're going into a turn, you can see the prop of his car sliding back and forth. We can use projection mapping and screens to make it look like cars are passing us or we're passing other cars. Yeah. Uh, okay, cool. Um, I just, you know. I was thinking of like the, the moment where he, you know, does the oil slick where it, it's kind of more fun if he's driving ahead of you instead of just parked. But I wasn't sure if you guys, what you guys thought about that. Cause I'm not sure how so for the work. oil slick specifically, I think it would be cool if there was a prop of him that was stationary, but there was screen mapping to make it look like we were all moving. And then when Herbie hits the oil slick, we could like veer off to the left and go off road. Okay. When in reality that is our track, but it looks like, we are falling off of the road or something like that. I think it would work. Yeah. Cool. Um, so, and then a lot of this stuff Thorndike does to mess with uh, Herbie, he does park his car and then get out and do things. So That's that true. would work having him sitting there. Uh, so we talked about the bear. The next thing that happens that I thought was interesting was when Thorndike and Havershaw change the arrows on the sign. And this is when everybody then drives into the mine shaft because they think it's the tunnel they're supposed to go into. I don't know that we need to show the sign changing. It might be fun if we just went straight into the mine shaft. But there's this really funny shot where you see cars on every level of the mine just driving in all different directions, um, which I think would be cool if we were driving through this mine and we just see cars all over the place. And we see this old miner with his donkey just standing there, and he's just still mining and totally ignoring everything that's happening around him. And it's comical, and I think that could be a good spot for a fun little animatronic yeah. of the donkey and the miner, and we're driving driving through this mine. What are your thoughts? I think that's I cool. I agree. I like yes. that a lot. 
As far as seeing the arrow, I, I think if we just have like the sign there, we don't need to necessarily see that it's been changed, like with an animatronic right, changing it. Right. Right. No, that's too much. I think I think just going into the mine mm-hmm. I think is enough for the story. You know, yeah. you don't need to know why we're in a mine. We can just assume it's part of this crazy race. Mm-hmm. You know? Um and then from the mine, the way Herbie gets out of the mine is he goes into the mine shaft elevator which raises him up to the top of the mountain. And then he goes down this huge hill. So this is where I was thinking it might be fun if we had it made it look like an elevator or it is an elevator. I don't know if this part of the ride was actually outside. So you come out of the mine and you're in the actual outside and then you go down the huge hill. Which then at the bottom of the hill, you could go back inside. But my thought was it might be fun to actually be outside when you come out of the mine shaft. What do you guys think? How does that interact with visibility stuff on trackless things? I don't know. I don't. I don't know how that think works. Think it would because it's just like RFID tags, right? To get yeah to move it. So I don't think it would massively affect like oh now we can see how we're moving. Okay. I mean, if we really want to get into semantics, there might be an issue with if it rained then. You know, it wouldn't be safe for a trackless ride to be on a slick downhill surface. Yeah, um, that's probably not acceptable. But from a blue sky perspective, I thought that might be an interesting moment. Yeah, we're a blue I sky kind of podcast. I have been told my shit's too ambitious so many fucking times. Well, yeah. <laughs> oh, Eric, we used that as like, a, like when a child is. A, Draws a bad picture. We're like, ooh, that was ambitious. Oh. Well, Eric, okay, so <laughs> our, our ideas are blue skies. See, Your ideas are one. outer fucking space. <laughs> okay, so Eric, I, I love you and your ideas. That was underwater, like a little bit, and you guys were like, whoa. And then Brock pitches carving out his own goddamn island. And you're like, yeah, it's, yeah, it's possible. Because all I you have to do is make a pitch, very Eric. small man-made river like they already have done 10,000 times. Anyway, Herbie I the love bug. I your pitch, Eric. <laughs> I'm not talking to you, Tanner, though you just made me, you hurt my feelings real bad. I, I just saw the opportunity for a joke, and that's what I offer okay. to this show. It was a good... <laughs> I'm looking at the Gabberts <laughs> on this hotel thing. Anyways. What? For another Herbie. look forward Wait, into the episode that hasn't come out yet. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> I was really <laughs> proud of mine. Mm. Spoiler alert for those who haven't seen it yet. He shouldn't be. <laughs> I disagree. So I next, still think it's a cool idea. So the next part then... Um, at this point in the movie, we're ready into the second day of the race. This is um, the thing I wrote down was I mentioned this is where Herbie kind of does some off-roading where all the other cars are doing the switchbacks and Herbie just tears straight down the middle of them. Um, that might be kind of fun. And you could see the cars kind of coming on either side of you. I think that's a lot of fun. Thoughts? That shortcut. Yeah, I think that's a lot of fun. And then it can be really bumpy and because he's going mm-hmm. through trees and off off the road and over rocks and bushes. Right. And then from there, he ends up in the Whiskey City ghost town. Uh, I don't know if we need to include this because visually it's similar to the mine. Yeah. It's just a lot of old like ghost town buildings. I don't know that we need that. I um, think we should still keep what is done in the ghost town. Just do it later where Herbie literally just like blasts through a, an old building to get in front of Thorndike. I think just include yeah. that earlier in the uh, when we see the other ghost town mine area. Sure. Sure. And then from the mine area, the next notable thing was when Herbie gets stuck in the tree. Um, and I thought rather than have him stuck in the tree and then hanging and then fall out of the tree, it might be fun if he like flew off the cliff, crashed into the tree and then just like immediately fell out of the tree and took off again. And then it's the Whomping Willow from Harry Potter. Yes. Disney Potter. Wrong theme park, Eric. <laughs> yeah, I, I do like that idea of it, of Herbie landing in a tree and then falling and then immediately driving again. I think that's a lot of fun. And the Whomping Willow. Yeah. Yeah. That's a must for me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Honestly, the whole episode is, I, I just can't get behind if this isn't specifically the Whomping Willow from outside of Hogwarts <laughs> as featured. Okay, in your head it can Harry be. Harry Potter in the Chamber of Secrets. And that's why Herbie's so magical. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Chamber of Secrets had a self-driving car too. That's pretty neat, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Canon. <laughs> A few more things happen then, like with Thorndike trying to block the road with a tree trunk, and then he gets stuck in Herbie's trunk, and then the car starts splitting apart, and Tennessee is trying to weld it together during the race. He's in the backseat with a welder, and Jim is like trying not to look at what's happening. Um, I don't know that we can incorporate that into the ride. I don't know that we can, (laughs) but what I was going to say was this might be the moment where we start see Herbie starting to split and crack much like in the movie. Mm -hmm. Uh, And then eventually he just breaks apart altogether. And then we have the two halves finishing. And again, it might be fun if like in the movie, if the back half gets there before the front half does. Yeah, I think so too. I would also say I'd like the finish, you know, in the movie and any good race in a film ends with kind of a close finish. So if we could somehow make it where we like just narrowly beat. So hot take. I think both halves should finish first and second, uh, just because there's going to be plenty of kids. Right. Uh, right. Oh no, no, I agree. What the love bug was that will want right. to finish first and second, and I agree. I assume the bad guy finishes second. Yeah. Yeah. He does. But like, yeah. I yeah. do so, think no, we need to just be beating him. Yeah. yeah. That. Yeah. That's fine. I. I totally agree. It's close, but like, you can't have. In, in a ride with like kids and families who may not know what the love bug is, I don't think you can have first bad guy second. No, I agree. I, I'm totally with you on that. Yeah, just like a small change to the, the Eric movie. and all of his participation rides. <laughs> this whole generation. <laughs> no, of I, I I agree. I agree. Ride. I completely agree too. I think honestly, have the two halves finish at the same time, uh, just ahead of it would work fine. Like they kind of just like you can have like a cool animatronic like animatronic or projection mapping of the thing and they kind of just split around it and go, I think would be fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, And then once the race finishes, Herbie, I don't know that we can incorporate this, but there's a fun moment where he crosses the finish line and then you'll laugh because I don't know how we can do this, but he crashes into himself and it ends up with the back half on top of the front half. And then everybody's like laughing. I don't know that we could incorporate that with ride vehicles, but maybe we have that as mm. a photo op moment when you're getting off the ride or something like that. Even that seems two dangerous, stacked. having the one person on top of the others. No, no. I mean, like, to stand in front of, not oh, actually. Then like, yeah, that, that's fine. <laughs> um, <laughs> I know, not don't climb up there. Yeah. That's fine. Um, but yeah, no, that, that I don't think that's something we could do in the ride. I think it'd be fun right, if just right. somehow, like, the front end ends up in front again and they crash together and suddenly Herbie's together again, because that way you can just go right into the, uh, the exit there. (laughs) Right. And the ride vehicles all reassembled. And then, um, the only other, that was the end of the race. The only other note I had was as a potential for the exit queue at the end of the movie, it's revealed that Thorndike had gambled his business, uh, on the race. And when he lost, he lost his business. And then he be- had to, because of the fine print, he had to become a, just a car mechanic instead of the owner of the dealership. And you see he and Havershaw trying to fix cars unsuccessfully. And then they get into a fight and they're spraying each other with the oil guns. And it's, it's a comical scene. So I thought that might leave an opportunity to have just the little animatronic scene as you're leaving seeing them um it doesn't necessarily have to be that but maybe we do see some sort of animatronic of them just reinforcing the fact that they lost the race and they got their comeuppance or for being jerks hear me out we pay homage to all the weird scenes at the end of races where apparently for winning the race, you get to kiss the girl that gives you the trophy <laughs> <laughs> that happened like six times in a row. And I was like, Oh, I thought it was just maybe that one. And it was a <laughs> joke, but apparently that's part of winning. The exit queue is the uh, path up to make out Hill where yeah. <laughs> you then get to make out in Herbie because we didn't get that into the ride successfully. <laughs> right. Then maybe we could add that in and we could have your, like, falling off the cliff moment there, too. Like, you're making out so hard 
that like it tips it over like the edge I, of the cliff. I just want to remind you who's going to be in these cars, which is families, um, <laughs> siblings, parents, and their children. Um, Not when I'm writing it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Whoever I'm riding with is getting made out with. Okay, well then, Eric, every ride you take can be a make-out ride. <laughs> no, we've already heard about him trying to pick up girls at Disney. It doesn't work. Yeah, no, I'm not very good at it. Eric's going to be so sad riding the Herbie, what he has convinced himself is a make-out ride by himself. <laughs> because even Lauren's sick of it. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe it didn't work with all the backwards hats I used to <laughs> If you had been able to quote the love bug to them, maybe. Mm, or if yeah, you had yeah. had a love bug. That's, that's what it is. Boom. <laughs> all right, so I think we have a ride. Right? Yeah. What, what do you guys think? I think so. Uh, but we so let's uh, let's start at the top and work our way to the end. Uh, so we start sure. in uh, Jim and and uh, uh, Tennessee's house. That's our cue. Uh, we enter the race, which uh, we anyone can jump in. We encounter uh, Thorndike and his dastardly deeds, including an oil slick, which can separate some of the cars from e- from each other, but not in half. Right. Um, we encounter him, uh, him putting the log in the road and us ending up in the mine shaft, some of the old abandoned ghost town kind of aspects. Um, we end up in a tree at one point, and eventually at the end of the ride, uh, Herbie, our ride vehicle, uh, splits in half. Uh, the back end finishes before the front end and eventually reconnects in time for the ride to end. Then as we exit, we see probably Thorndike uh, getting his comeuppance in some sort of animatronic form, not the making out, Eric. I know you seem distressed. <laughs> Thorndike and Havershaw can be making out. How about that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, fine. Back in. <laughs> At least they found love. <laughs> All right. So that's it. There's our ride. That wasn't so bad, was it? You guys didn't want to do a Herbie ride, right? I specifically so said bad. at the beginning I was excited to do a Herbie Me ride too. after seeing the movie. Okay, okay. <laughs> All right. Just make it sure. Just make it sure. I think it sounds sweet. Yeah, it lived up to what I was hoping. <laughs> okay, good. Yeah, I, I'm excited about this. I would love for her to have a Herbie ride if I haven't made that clear. Yeah, I mean, I'll be honest. I was came in fully prepared to dunk on everything, but... Actually, I feel like this would be a ride I would actually love to ride if it was in the parks. And I think this is kind of a great ride for a theme park because Disney has been understandably focusing when it makes a new ride, especially lately. They like doing modern properties uh, that are still within the zeitgeist, but not really necessarily thinking about, is it a good ride? Uh, so, like, the Frozen ride that replaced um, uh, Maelstrom, Maelstrom. Is, I, I hear by I'm all accounts it's a good ride, that. but it's not a movie that lends itself to a ride. I think the Love Bug lends itself perfectly. It gets that back in the zeitgeist, and it has that old, fun, classic Disney feel. Frozen is good. No, the no, I, I hear I hear it, I hear it's very good, but you Except know Except the creepy projection mapped faces, those don't work. Disney get rid of them and add good animatronics to the ride, please. <laughs> but like yeah, it's not and a make movie sure it's that, not breaking down all the time. When you watch the movie, you aren't thinking, Ooh, I can see a ride in this. I you wanted know? to ride a carousel based on it. <laughs> that's that makes Yeah, that's why I was all like, Oh, a carousel? <laughs> Great. <laughs> How inventive. I agree with you, though, Brock. This was a movie when I watched it. I was like, man, I want to ride in Herbie. Regardless of anything else, I feel like whether somebody likes the movie or not, it's one of those things where it's like, yeah, I want to ride in Herbie. Very similar to the Avatar type stuff where it's like, yeah. Right. Maybe you don't aren't super invested in any of it, but you're like, yeah, I'd ride on the back of a mighty Akron. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, for sure. 
Yeah, I, I, I am Sivaku. very excited to one day experience it, and I hated the movie. So, you know. <laughs> so, good job, cool. Jake. All right. All right, we got a ride, babies. So, with that, I think, are we moving on to the lightning round, or do we get to take a week off the lightning round? Nope, lightning round. <laughs> Wait, Since Brock okay? shouted over your question, I think we have to do a lightning round. So good. <laughs> yeah, I, what I was think... your question? I was just excited. Should we do a lightning round? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What does okay. the wheel of fate have in store for us today? Oh Ooh, my we God. are pitching a love bug roller coaster. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. No. <laughs> Instead. <laughs> I don't want to do this. I don't care. Too bad. <laughs> Too bad. We're doing we're doing a walkthrough attraction themed to the fox and the hound. Oh, <laughs> oh Jesus! <laughs> it's like the one Disney movie with no setting. <laughs> All right, cool. Well, we're jumping into this fast as we can. Before anybody can try and think of anything. It's me first. Great. Rigged. Um, No, I want time to think about this. Are you you kidding me? Uh, All right. Um, You're in a forest with the fox and or the hound. Probably both. Um, What if there was just one of them? You're sniffing out game? Eating berries? And you're surviving. You are a survival walkthrough. It's like three days long. You're not provided any food or shelter. You got to make that shit yourself. And you're surviving with the fox in the hand. That's my pitch. Great job, Eric. Thank you. <laughs> Keep that in mind, the, the listeners, that this has to, like, only the winners of the lightning rounds go on to future. Uh, yeah. Main Street Madness is so if you want to hear more about my survival. Yeah, this is we're really I, starting off strong for year two of uh, Main Street Madness with the uh, yeah. Fox and the Hound I walk through a tra- Something tells me no matter what wins, this isn't gonna quite make the top sixteen or thirty two oh. or whatever we do. If mine wins, it will. I will force it onto the bracket. Dude, this is this is gonna fucking come back and bite us in the ass. <laughs> Probably. All right. Uh, uh, rock. Oh, Jesus. Okay. Um, okay, uh, so this is actually the only Disney animated film I haven't seen. Um, so <laughs> you walk through the little log that they, they're playing around and then into the farmhouse because there's a farmhouse. Uh, and then you look at some dogs, and some of them are mean, but the one is real cute, and that one uh, becomes friends with a fox. But you also see out the window um, in a different part of the walkthrough. And then you look at the, all of the stuffed animals they've killed. Wow. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Nice. I don't know if you guys are just it. really disappointed or if you froze. <laughs> okay, you froze. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> oh, no, it is both, sir. Don't worry about it. But I am a huge <laughs> fan. Jake, you are up next. All right. I'm actually excited for this. You guys ready? So for my pitch of a walkthrough, you're going to get up there and they're going to strap a pair of fox ears onto your head and a (laughs) fox tail onto your butt. And then they're going to make you run through this while a guy dressed as Amos chases you down with a double barrel shotgun. First, he's going to be chasing you down in his car and the old lady's going to pop up and shoot it in the radiator. And he's going to get pissed and yell at her for a while. Then he's going to jump out and actually chase you on foot for the rest of the time. And you have to make it out before he brutally murders you. That's my pitch. Most dangerous game, baby. See, I thought you were starting in a furry direction, and then you went into a most dangerous game direction. So, congrats. Tanner <laughs> looks existentially distraught. At I love everything. this movie. <laughs> I've never seen that. My turn. You're yeah. Okay, so we are going to begin this walk in, walk through attraction with uh, Copper and Todd when they are young and friends, playful in the woods. Then we will move on to follow Copper as he grows up on the farm, as he's trained that foxes are actually your enemies. He's trained to hunt them. Eventually, we will come back and walk through the woods 
and we will eventually get to witness the reconnection of these two friends as at first as enemies and then eventually remembering the close bonds they had together as we're moved just like we were when we watched the movie the end <laughs> nice oh there's some wild tonal shifts in that yeah around. just a bit <laughs> i actually really love that movie I've never seen it. I haven't it seen it in a sad. long time. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's not a happy movie. Yeah. And the I thing is, the Disney version yeah. is the Disney version yeah. of that story. The original story is so much worse. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. I just knew that it was fucked up. And so I was just like, yeah. all right, cool. Same. I just never had an I think interest because I don't get like killed in the end of the of the original story. I think in the original story, the the dog copper kills Todd. But in the process, gets rabies from Todd. So then Amos has to shoot Copper. That would make sense in the original story. That's <laughs> yeah, probably an allegory for something. I'm sure it is. But on that note, Brock, why don't you take us out of here? Strap in, folks. All righty. Uh, coming up behind us in the Thorndike special, it's our <laughs> Facebook chick. Facebook. Dot com slash Main Street Musings. All right. Uh, and about to th- throw itself off the Golden Gate Bridge. It's our Instagram, Tanner. <laughs> main underscore street underscore musings. Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> That's from the movie. And That's Eric. a reference to the movie. That's something that happens in the movie. Brock is not just being... A st- I mean, he is being an idiot, but... <laughs> And Eric, (laughs) don't bet your business on the results of the race with our Twitter. At MSM (laughs) underscore podcast. And 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 I'm Brock. Everyone, make sure to... Did you forget your own name? (laughs) What the hell was that? uh, My thing was freezing really bad, so I couldn't... (laughs) Make sure to give us a a review and a five-star rating. Tell all your friends. Main Street Musings. Bye. Main Street Musings. I cannot wait till the next bracket countdown to see how how it goes. (laughs) It'll go.